All right, guys, let's talk about crypto today, um, the latest FUD, the latest news. Um, but I want to talk about it slightly different because I haven't got my laptop with me, so I won't be able to do any charts with you. I've actually forgot my laptop. But I want to talk about something very, very important. I think I picked up on it yesterday um, on a private message with someone, and they know exactly what I'm talking about. It was on a group, and I talked about it, right? Um, you see... There's, a, there's this interview going around by some Elizabeth Warren or something like this, right? Where she pulled a few bunch of people from the Senate to talk about this. Now, you do know what the Senate is in America, right? They're pretty much similar to the Parliament, right, in the UK, right? Very similar, right? So they're talking about how crypto is bad, how Bitcoin is bad, how it needs to be heavily regulated. And this is constantly coming up. I mean, we had, what's his name the other day? Um, the orange face man, what's his name? Donald Trump, right? He talked about it as well. So everyone's talking about how crypto needs to be heavily, heavily regulated because it's, you know, they don't want, um, you know, Bitcoin to be the global currency. They acknowledge it's a currency, right? And they want to regulate it. Um, so this kind of leads to that point where like, you know, this famous quote from Gandhi, right? First they ignore you and clearly they've been ignoring us. They've been ignoring crypto guys uh, for a very long time, right? Um, you know, they laughed at us, they ignored us, right? Um, so that's what it is. I mean, in the beginning they laughed at us, so that's true. Um, you know, they ignored us, again, that's true. But crypto became mainstream, right? You've got Coinbase doing an IPO, first ever crypto company doing an ICO, right? And now you've got a country taking us on board and basically, uh, you know, making it a legitimate tender in their country, official currency of their country, right? But side by side with US dollar, obviously. So a lot of these countries, they have their own currency, but if there's a failing currency, then they usually fall back to BD, uh, for, to uh, United States dollar. And now El Salvador said, well, we've got a melting ice cube, right, in our uh, treasury, so why don't we just get a backup right so they got literally went and got a backup not much 150 million is nothing but that 150 million dollars worth of bitcoin in their treasury has um created a uh, a chain effect right a chain reaction right that's what it's created because not only did they do that they've also did something else as well which is the most powerful thing anyone can do so you know how everyone's been talking about this energy fud right energy bitcoin uses energy and this and that whatnot and this and that everything uses energy right <laughs> they they burn more energy to produce an electric car which then uses burnt energy to drive i mean it's just a not a non-stop energy thing bitcoin uses energy to confirm and secure the network 100 percent renewable well not 100 percent, but then again it's like depends where they're doing it but majority of it is waste energy is cheap energy we use the cheapest energy possible but then this country, El Salvador, uh, kind of hit the nail in the head and kind of shut up everybody because they can produce 95 megawatts, 95 megawatt from a volcano, Mother Nature, Mother Nature, cheap as hell, right? They can produce that. And what they can do is by producing that, they can literally, if they wanted to, power the entire global mining from that one power plant on a volcano. So I tweeted something, I said, you know, the question you get, what is Bitcoin backed by? Well, now we can say Bitcoin is backed by Mother Nature and there's a big volcano to prove it, right? So that's what Bitcoin is backed by, right? And they're afraid, so now they're fighting it. So the, the, the quote, right, first they laugh at you, then they ignore you, then they fight you. Now the fight has started, but the fight has started at a specific time, right? And this is what a lot of people are not putting the dots together. So we've got the G7 summit starting tomorrow in UK, um, starting tomorrow. Uh, Biden has already arrived, right? So some re uh, resort um, in, um, what's it called? Um, I, I forgot the place anyway, next to Devon, somewhere next to Devon, um, Cornwall, Cornwall. I always forget the name. I don't know why I forget the name. So in near Cornwall, they've got a massive resort, holiday resort booked out. You know, you've got all the, uh, you know, heavy security teams out there, right? The presidential security, right? That's what it's gone to. So the, the town is locked, locked down, right? I've seen it before. I've seen it in Watford. When they done it in Watford, uh, in the Grove Hotel, they lock it down. They lock the whole area down. It, it's like heavy, mental, crazy. But anyway... So this is what's happened right now, where they've um, gone ahead and um, they've 
like you know they're, they're going to do the G7 and remember in the G7 you've got the the great seven countries right who are part of this but also they've invited other countries so they've invited the uh, prime minister of uh, India they've invited some other place like you know uh, Mexico or Spain or something like I don't know what it is right but they've invited these guys right so they realize that hold on we can't keep everyone out sometimes we've got to bring some guys in give them that little bit of credit you know hype them up a little bit so we can get them on the same page as us and what I'm trying to get to is so just before the, all of this before you know announcing the date and everything because they don't locate they don't really release the location or the data um, too early because of security reasons right they the last minute thing that's what they do so they've been talking about how to regulate crypto and how the global so this particular interview this um, uh, Elizabeth Warren did right with the Senate Council right um, they're talking about how the global uh, countries the great countries of the world need to come together remember that's the key word they need to come together and they need to disrupt Bitcoin they need to um, uh, ban Bitcoin in such a way where you know anybody who's in Bitcoin can never ever come back to the fiat currencies that's what they're planning to do that's a bigger agenda and I was afraid that they're gonna pick up on that right so it looks like this is exactly what they're about to do right where they're gonna do it in the G7 meeting right remember most of it is, is private they don't really tell you publicly what they've really discussed right I think that's gonna be happening and this is what they were talking to they weren't talking to us the public they weren't talking to um, the Senate Council and this particular thing they were not talking to the public they were just informing the public to create the FUD but I think this is what they're gonna be talking in the G7 right in the g7 this is going to happen then they have obviously a public thing and i think that's where you're going to really find the biggest news this is one of the reasons why i actually specifically said in the group i said i'm actually very pessimistic right even though we can see a little hype this could easily be a dead cat bounce we could easily see a massive manipulation to wipe out more people to you know cause harm right so let's see this but saying that if the global community of bitcoiners came together right then none of this FUD could affect us right as long as we hold strong we, we're good right um, and this could easily be the other thing so you might see a massive manipulated FUD created um, and then they talk about it but in the background they might also accept cryptocurrency because we do know a lot of big banks and this and that want to put Bitcoin on their balance sheet but they just don't know how to do it there are other companies and organizations out there billionaire companies trillionaire companies who are basically figuring out how to do it right and that's what they're doing all the banks are already I mean JP Morgan good example already on it right so this is the kind of stuff that's going on where you know we've got a situation uh, which seems to be out of control mostly because of all the FUD and all the brainwashed people that follow the media mainstream media follow these you know news anchors or whatnot right follow them and um, you know kind of just you know whenever they see a bad news they don't right and you know what the worst thing is those people who do this um, they got weak hands right and normally they end up buying high and selling low right so they they're at a loss and then they blame everybody else for it well, it's not it's your fault it's your fault right um, strong hands hold this was like the perfect opportunity this particular dip was the perfect opportunity to pick up as much as you can even to the point where I'm going to tell you this right now right and this is no financial advice right I've been saying it in a few videos as well I said look at the seven day look at the 30 day on the coin market cap whatever discount you see so if you see 20% down 30% down 40% down you should be buying and holding okay of course you should be buying and holding with the intention for at least five years right if you believe in a shit coin buy it and hold it for example I've mentioned this many times Cardano is a coin that I believe in since 2018 I'm holding on to it until 2025 2027 2026 I'm holding on to it it's moved off right so this is what it is a lot of these coins um, that I believe in I just move it off the exchanges put it on a cold wallet and move. I believe in it right so it doesn't I don't really care where the market goes right 
you know, it's a Bitcoin I believe in. Bitcoin I believe in. Remember, I don't keep any Bitcoin on exchanges, right? Because I believe in it. For my Bitcoin portfolio is not there for some exchange to hold for me, for some custodial thing to hold for me. No, no, no. That's mine. That's my. That's that's what I'm saving up, right? For 2030, possibly even more. I mean, now I'm looking at stuff and I'm thinking, do you know what? I think Bitcoin has the potential to do even better even better so maybe in 2030 i might not cash out all of it right i might just cash out some of it but i might just stick around you know what i mean because then now it looks more serious you see this is what i'm trying to say it's more serious you know when they laugh at you it's not as serious and this is when i la laughed at it as well right when i first found out in 2010 i laughed at it as well right i said what the hell is this you know um you know when they ignore you right I entered, I played around, they're ignoring us, it's fine. Like, you know, okay, whatever money, right? We're messing around, we're making money happy days, they're still ignoring us. And this is the thing I said, like, even about UK tax laws, right? Where individuals are completely ignored. Businesses are not, right? They do have to pay taxes, but individuals are completely ignored, right? So they've been ignoring us. And now, seems like they're about to fight us. So everything we've ever thought um, previously where we thought like okay they've been fighting us and that actually it's not true um, looks more like the fight has literally just begun and it's begun officially right so I can say this right officially the fight is beginning now question is is now a lot I know a lot of people who come into crypto one new guys right who, who see these 10% 20% swings up and down right and you know they're expecting that kind of thing guys listen understand Bitcoin was a joke Bitcoin was a joke for most people. They laughed at us, right? For over, I don't know, eight, nine years. It took eight, nine years, like you can say close to a decade. They've been laughing at us, right? While they were doing that, they were also ignoring us. It took a decade, over a decade for this, right? Now, all right, the fight has started a decade later. So understand what I'm trying to say. Look at the time frame. This fight, I think, will go on for another decade. All right, whether they win or lose, it's going to go for another decade, and we're not giving up that easily. All right, and a lot of countries are realizing this as well because you're forced, you're forced into using um, United States dollars, right? And I've got nothing against the dollar. Trust me, I hold a lot of USDT, right? Um, I actually use my USDT as my universal currency for me to trade crypto and whatnot, and this and that. Right. So for me, it's very important that, you know, this is how it stays. Um, so you is, you know, I've got no issues with it, right? I don't see a problem. Also, you know, when like, um, oh, sorry guys, some private security team. There we go. Probably just some, some minister, MP or something, probably even Biden just sitting in there cruising around London. Um, in some Volvos and some Minis and whatnot, right? So, yeah, you do see shit like that. But anyway, so this is the kind of stuff we see where basically um, uh, crypto um, comes in like, you know, so they're trying to legalize uh, and, you know, block and they're going to fight with us, right? That's what's going to happen. We're going to have a massive fight in crypto. We're going to see this. It's going to take about a decade. Um, I doubt they're going to win. I doubt they're going to win because um, a lot of the countries can see how the dollar printing hasn't stopped, right? And I was saying, this is what I was saying. I don't care how much dollars they print. I don't care how many pounds they print, right? Each country has its own reasons why they do it, right? Um, ultimately, they do have a macro um, um, kind of a thing, like, you know, projection. They know what they're doing. L let's put it this way. They know what they're doing, all right? When they, the more they print, the more they inflate, the more everything goes up you're in the cycle your balance doesn't grow you don't do nothing the only thing that transfers wealth right is something like bitcoin right where basically we can see massive people coming in putting the trust and belief into it right the network itself right michael saylor put it very nice he said you know what is the currency of facebook right is a question what is the currency of facebook the currency of facebook is the two billion users it has you understand? Know it's the two billion users it has that's what the currency is it's your data that's what the currency is, right? So here we've got Bitcoin with only 2% of the global population, 2%, right? Whereas in compared to the global population, you've got 25% um, of them using um, Facebook. That's the currency. We only got 2%, right? Using Bitcoin and this and that. So when we got this, right? The network, the power of the people, the trust, right? Or the trustlessness, right? Remember, Bitcoin is trustless. That is the um, power we have in it at the moment, right? 
And everyone can see that. Everybody can see that, right? In, oh my days, what the... Uh, sorry, there's uh, the road, the way it's blocked, it's just stupid. So everybody can see how the, um, the you know, the monitor, the power works, right? And then we've got the most decentralized um, security system, security network on the planet, right? Which is the mining operation um, to confirm the ledgers and everything, right? That's what it is. So this is what's going on um, in the um, mining thingy, right? The, 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 you know, the, when they mine it, sorry, I was just trying to wave at, <laughs> at somebody who gave way to me. Um, so, um, it's trustless, right? And we, we work on a complete different wavelength, right? You know, we don't need central banks, we don't need governments to govern us or anything like that. The, the network, the, the people decide what the price of a Bitcoin is. This is funny, people actually decide what the, and I've made a video on this, is who decides what the price is, right? We do, right? We decide what we are willing to pay for it, right? That's what it is, you know? Um, and at, oh, strong hands always win, right? People who have been in it for a longer time, always gonna win, always gonna win, right? So the fight has started, that's all I'm gonna say. The G7 right now, um, about to start tomorrow, is gonna create some sort of a chaos. I'm worried, so I'm gonna still stay on the sidelines. Um, all I can say is, guys, whatever you do, right? This is no financial advice. If you are buying any dips or any crypto or anything right now, five years, five years. That's what I'm gonna say, five years. However, on the other side, let me tell you this, the bull run's not over. Bitcoin still has the potential to hit the 140, 150 that I've said, right? The 146K, right? That I've actually said. It's still got the potential. In fact, recently, I've just like, on the recent video, I think yesterday or the day before, on the video, I said, we got the 87K flashing at, right? If we are starting to uh, reverse the trend, we are gonna see an 87K, right? So I'm very bullish still on Bitcoin, but what I'm advising is all the new people that are entering the sphere, um, please, please, um, have the mindset to be in it for at least five years because if you're not you are gonna get wasted You are gonna get wasted, you know, remember you don't get into crypto, all right? You don't buy Bitcoin cryptocurrencies or anything, right? Um, and you know, you don't set you don't buy at whatever price, right? And you don't sell um, Cheap you're in it for the gains. So you'll stick around for the gains, right? Have some strong hands have some good emotions, right? Don't react with the news um, That's what I'm gonna say, right? So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out. So I think the weekend is, is something for you to really, really watch out because um, um, shit's about to hit the fan, right? I'm telling you, the shit's about to hit the fan. Um, so, so far, as far as I know from the news that I've gathered, um, the, in the G7, there's going to be nine or ten countries there. There may be more. Um, I don't know, but that's what's going to happen. So it's coming. I'm telling you, just be prepared. Um, but I want to see how the Bitcoin community, the world, how they react. That's more important. I think I need to really see how we react together as one. I know how I'm reacting, right? Um, whatever I'm on, I'm on. I'm not selling anything, right? Um, I am, however, on this particular occasion for the weekend, I'm going to set up some buy orders at some ridiculous prices. I'm not trading, by the way. I'm not going to trade this because uh, this is a bit risky trading it. I'll be honest with you. Um, it doesn't matter what percentage. I'm still not going to trade it at all. Um, but I am going to buy. I am going to buy. I'm going to buy some and just stash it up. Happy days, right? That's all I want to do. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm not going to waste your time. So uh, other than that, guys, adios, amigos.